Hmm. Yes. Yes, very good. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just doing some, uh, cultural research. You get how it is. Yes, I am indeed a real doctor. Please tell me, what is the matter with you today? What? You have a virus? You got it from the internet. From watching too much cultured anime. Ah uh, yes, a very typical problem a lot of my patients run into. Have you tried using perhaps something like ExpressVPN for example? Because I use it quite often while doing cultural research to mask my IP and encrypt my data to protect myself on the World Wide Web. Because I don't want internet providers and other weirdos to see what I'm researching. Because even in incognito mode, those internet providers can see exactly what I'm doing. Not to mention if I want to watch something else like Harry Potter on Netflix, I can use ExpressVPN to get around those geo restrictions very easily. I mean, if we're talking personally, I use ExpressVPN a lot because it's fast, reliable, and it's ranked as one of the best VPN services on the web. Not only that, but it's also super affordable at less than $7 a month. You don't need to be a doctor to realize how good that is. But I'll tell you what, my patient, I'm willing to give you a special prescription of the first three months free off of your ExpressVPN deal by going to expressvpn.com slash anime man. Now, if you excuse me, I need to continue my cultural research. You can... You can go now. Okay. Nice. Yeah. How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Bon. As of last month, it has been exactly four years since I moved to the great land of the weebs, aka Japan. And suffice it to say, I've uh, made a pretty comfortable home for myself during those four years. And even though I did bring a lot of the stuff in my home in Australia, all the way over to Japan, there was one thing, one big aspect of my life that unfortunately I had to leave behind for a number of reasons, and that is my manga collection. I made a video about four years ago, right before I had confirmed that I was going to be moving to Japan, where I showed off my manga collection. It was a really simple video. Weird thing is, is was that that video wasn't even supposed to make it onto my main channel. It was originally just gonna go onto my second channel, but I was like, fuck it. It's about manga, anime man close enough. But since moving to Japan, I have had to abandon, essentially, leave behind all of the manga that I had collected over the span of like 10 years or something during middle school and high school and most of my elementary school period, and basically start fresh from scratch. And after four years, I can very easily say with confidence that uh, my collection has just exploded to another level. And because for the past four years, and especially since I've gotten this new background where it's literally visible in every one of my videos, a lot of people have been saying, hey Joey, can you give us your updated manga collection? Can, can you tell us what you got? Because even though you share a lot of the manga that you buy on your monthly otaku collection videos, you don't really share everything. We want to know exactly every single volume that you have. And so after many, many requests, I figured it was finally time to give you guys my, I guess, new and updated manga collection. And strap yourselves in because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of shit to cover. Uh, let's go. Welcome to my room, but from a different angle. So you've probably seen this shelf back here, but many people don't know that I actually have another shelf right here. So yeah, this is the second shelf I had to buy because the first shelf filled up so quickly. We're going to go over that after this first shelf. So let's go over and cover this first shelf of books. Now, as you can see, um, this bookshelf is quite wide, quite thick and quite deep. So I have to actually double up on the layers right here. So let's just briefly go over like the first layer of stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to talk too in depth about any of these, but the first one is Beastars. Yeah, right now there are 18 volumes of Beastars, I think that's the newest one. Plus I found this thing called Beast Complex, which is like a, uh, I think it's like a short story based one. I haven't actually read this yet, I just found it and I was like, oh cool, okay, sweet. I did a whole video on Beastars if you want to know my review on that series. Next to that we have Ijiranai de Nagatoro-san, I just bought the latest uh, sixth volume of this. Uh, I don't think I've talked about this series extensively in a video before, but I've mentioned it in a couple of videos, just kind of on and off. Really funny, really cute, um, really funny especially and ironic considering that even though this is very family friendly, it's created by Nanashi who used to be like a, a hardcore lolly hentai artist. So yeah, take that with a grain of salt, but this series is great, so there's six volumes of that. 
gonna move this. And then behind that, I have all the volumes of Berserk. Um, and it extends even down here, all the way up to the current volume 40. Yeah. Even though this hasn't updated in a very long time, I kind of have uh, the series that I've already read in the past kind of stocked away in the back so that with currently se airing series, like, or currently serializing series like Beastars and Nagatoro san, I can just quickly slap them in. Oh god, I don't want to drop this. <clears throat> okay. Next to Berserk, we have six volumes of Judge right here. This is one of my favorite horror manga and I've pushed this horror manga so many times in videos because if there is any horror manga that deserves or, or a anime, it is definitely Judge. Next to that is uh, a one shot done by the same creator as Judge called Akai Imoto. Um, this is pretty creepy. You can probably tell just from the cover, but one volume. Really spooky stuff. So if you like Judge and any of that kind of stuff from the same creator, then uh, yeah, you can probably grab yourself this one too. Let's look at the front here of the currently serializing stuff that I have collected. Uh, we have Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man, I only just recently like started to get into Chainsaw Man because I heard about Fire Punch, which I have somewhere, you'll see later. But this is fucking awesome. This series is so fucking good. I recommend it to anybody. It's a uh, Shonen Jump series. And uh, the art style is like so unique, and I love it. This series is fucking great. Yeah, so if you like something that's a little more violent and a little more like quote unquote edgy, then uh, yeah, I recommend Chainsaw Man. And then next to that, we have Tempuru, which is created by Yoshioka Kimitake, who also illustrated uh, Grand Blue. I had covered this in a monthly otaku collection like previously, so if you want my thoughts on that, then check that video out. Let's move up here now. This section of the shelf I dub the Inio Asano corner because every book in this corner here is done by Inio Asano, one of my favorite manga artists. So at the front here we've got a bunch of his like short form stuff, like Subarashi Sekai, Hikari no Machi, Sekai no Orito, Yoake Mae, like all these one shot manga that Inio Asano is known for. And then behind that oh, we have Oyasumi Pun Pun. One of my favorite manga series of all time, all 13 volumes of that. We have two volumes of Soranin, which is the first manga that he ever made. Also became a really good live action. We have Umibeno no Nanako, Go on the Shore. This is one actually that uh, Aki got me into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's doing the camera right now. <laughs> but yeah, Go on the Shore, uh, Aki got me into that. Only two volumes, but it's so, so well done. And then right next to that is nine volumes of Dead Dead Demons, Dead Dead, Dead, Dead Destruction. That's the full title of it. I don't know why Inio Sanda decided to call it that, but this is his currently serializing uh, volume, and I think volume 9 is the latest volume. I don't know if it's the final volume because I haven't caught up on it. I've just basically collected all the volumes just to make sure that I have everything. But Inio Sanda's great. If you love Oyasumi Pun Pun and stuff like that, and you like your more human drama stuff, definitely recommend Inio Sanda. Alright, let's move down here. Now, these next couple of shelves in the back row uh, are all JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, as you can see. Uh, and you guys, if you've seen the video where I talk, or I guess read all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in one sitting, or try to read in one sitting, which I'll leave boom, on the screen right now, then you'll know that there is an insane amount of JoJo volumes. There's 127, I think, the latest volume being Volume 23 of Jojo Leon, which is part 8. So yeah, if you want to know my thoughts on Jojo, there's a whole video for that. But let's go over the stuff on the front. So we have Val Love, which is a new series that I recently just picked up and is currently serializing. I'm probably going to mention it in my upcoming Monthly Otaku collection, so if you want to know my thoughts on that, then stick around for that. We've got Vinland Saga. I don't have all of Vinland Saga yet. I'm still in the process of collecting all of them. I have the first eight volumes, and I believe there are 22, 23 volumes altogether right now. So I have read like half of Vinland Saga back in the day, but uh, considering that it got the anime adaptation and everybody's talking about it, and people have been pressuring me to catch up on it, I decided, you know what, I'll just buy it. Start it from scratch again. Next to that, I have Jackie Sama Kujikenai. I don't know if I've talked about this in a video or not. Again, I've covered so many manga series in my Mother Otakus. I don't know which ones I have and haven't covered, but this has five volumes right now. 
kind of the same thing as Ijirane and Nagatoro-san, really family-friendly, like, cute wholesomeness. So I recommend that. And then next to that, or down here, we have... Bokutachi wa benkyou ga dekinai. Or Bokuben. I think this got an anime adaptation, and it's getting a second season as well. It's fucking cute. Shonen Jump rom-com with a little bit of ecchi in it is like my guilty pleasure. So I freaking love it. All right, let's go down here. By the way, behind this as well is still all JoJo, so I'm not covering any of that. These are all pretty much just like short stuff uh, that I haven't quite finished yet. They're either one-shot stuff or like the first volume of a lot of series, so just really quickly. So we got Ibitsu, really, really good horror manga. We got Denye Shoujo, created by uh, Katsura-san, who did uh, Eyes, one of my favorite romance manga. We got Maho Shoujo of the End, just magical horror. Warao Ishii, uh, first chapter of Monster, I really need to get the next couple of volumes of that. We have Koisu the YouTuber, which is a manga about uh, two YouTubers falling in love. I did a video on that as well, if you'd like to check that out. We got Kamisama Kisama Koroshitai, first two volumes, there's four volumes of that. Uh, Machigatta Ko Maho Shoujo ni Shite which is like a parody on the magical girl genre. This one's also really, really funny. We got Kudan no Gotoshi, good horror manga. Shiakusho, another good horror manga. I got volume 8 of Taizo Mote King Saga because the first 7 volumes I have in Australia and I never had the 8th volume, so I don't plan to collect the volumes yet. Oh, maybe I will, I don't know. We got Kurozukin, another good horror manga. Shishu Goku, two volumes of that, another good horror manga. Oh, man, I've got a lot of horror manga. We got first three volumes of Black Lagoon. If you've seen the anime, you know how freaking awesome it is. And we got the first two volumes of Homunculus, also a very good human drama horror. As you can see, I love my horror manga. This shelf right here is pretty much the end of the Jojo stuff. I have the Jojo Leon volumes at the front here just so I can slot it in. Next to that is Mizuku na Futari de gozaimasu ga. First five volumes of that. I've covered this also in a month of Taku. We also have Demi-chan wa Kataritai, another feel-good series, This, which got an anime adaptation, which was pretty good in my opinion, so I recommend that. All right, next we got Exeros, first nine volumes of this. This is getting an anime adaptation next season. I don't know how the fuck they're gonna adapt it because it is like, erotic to the core, so good luck anime industry. Next we got Spy Family, really really good manga series. Volume 1 is missing because I think it's in Aki's room because she was reading it. I didn't take it. <sighs> and next to that is Saint Onisan, which is, uh, I'm probably gonna make a video on this because it's really really funny, really really cool, and the concept is really unique and interesting. Is that so. the one about Jesus and Buddha living the, together? Yes, oh. that is the one about Jesus ah, and Buddha living together. You wanna, I wanna read that. I have the first 11 volumes of that. Not completely finished because it's still serializing, but really, really good nonetheless. Behind that, we have all 15 volumes of Eyes, one of my favorite and, my opinion, the best romance manga to be ever written. I did a whole video on that as well. Next to that is Bloody Monday. If you like Death Note and stuff like that, read this. It's freaking awesome. I'm surprised there's no anime adaptation of this. And right next to that is Shoujo Fujibun, which is a, I guess, like, semi-documentary, like, non-fiction story about Nishio Ishin, the creator of the Monogatari series. One of my favorite authors. He's like weird childhood that he had and like the reason why he started writing. Oh, Imperfect Girl. Imperfect Girl, ah. yes. I also have the book, like the original novel of this as well, but this is the manga adaptation of it. Okay, I have all six volumes of Nejimage Fakta, which is a really, really etchy series, but also pretty good. And then right next to that is all, and it's gonna continue down here as well, all 31 volumes of Slam Dunk, one of my favorite sports manga of all time. Now, this is the original uh, version. They recently also came out with like a new revamped version, I guess for like the 30th anniversary or something, but I decided to get the original paperbacks of these because these are the volumes that I personally grew up reading. This is freaking awesome. Even if you don't like basketball, read this because this series got me into basketball and got a lot of people into basketball so definitely read it in front of that we have a few again smaller series we got dead company same guy that made judge we got ototo no otto which is an actually really interesting manga i'm probably gonna make a video about this we also have komisan wa komisho desu the first two volumes i know i gotta get more of these komisan i mean everyone knows komisan she's freaking awesome next is kurasume to uemura yuka wa koita which is a really like kind of Suzumiya Haruhi styled manga, really good. First volume of Gigant, uh, done by uh, Oku Hiroya, creator of Gantz. Uh, Kimi no tame ni onei chan ga minna koroshite agiru, which is like a really interesting series. I haven't actually read it yet. And then this one right here, 
Again, creator of the Monogatari series, and even though it had a crappy anime adaptation, my god, the manga is so freaking good. So please read it if you enjoy it. I just realized we're not even at the first shelf. You guys still sticking around? Alright, we got Usotsuki Paradox uh, first volume. We got the first volume of Mushishi. I definitely plan to get more volumes of this. Uh, we have some weirder series that you probably don't need to worry about, like Middle Love right here. Uh, we've got Hinachan Chinji which I'm probably also going to make a video on. Very, very good dark uh, human drama right here. And Midan and the Aochan I'm pretty sure this also got an anime adaptation recently. But I've got the first volume of that because uh, my friend said that this was a pretty good series. But more importantly, right behind that is the first, or I guess all, 42, because it's going to continue down here, all 42 volumes of the original Dragon Ball manga. I mean, you have to, right? Like, this is everybody's childhood, especially mine. Like, I, I weirdly enough grew up more with the manga than the anime. I know, I'm, I'm that one percent that grew up with the manga and not the anime. I mean, I've watched the anime as well, obviously. And uh, again, much like Slam Dunk, this is like the original paperbacks. So, uh, they also have like a new and revamped version of the paperbacks as well. I just got the original because I think it just looks better. Next we got Zombie Bat, first three volumes of that. Really good horror series. Uh, we've also got the first three volumes of Boku Tachi Ga Really good human drama. Down next to Dragon Ball, we have Boku no Watashi no Yusha Gaku, which is done by the same guy who made, uh, what's the name? Saiki Kuso no Sainan. Yeah, it was the same manga that he did before that. Next to that is the six volumes, all six volumes of Ijousha no Ai. I'm pretty sure I covered this in Amato Otaku. And the first five volumes of Kamisama no Yutori. Again, another really good survival horror manga. All right, next I got first 14 volumes of Grand Blue. I'm sure everybody knows this series. Really, really funny comedy manga with a little bit of edgy thrown in. Also has a really good anime adaptation. And behind that, we got a lot more. We got the first seven volumes of Honega Kusarumade, or I think it's called uh, When Your Body Rots. What's it called in English? Until Your Body Rots. Until Your Body Rots. Thank some, you. Until yeah. Your Bones Rot. Yeah, Until Your Bones That's Rot. That's it. Until Didn't Your I Bones get you Rot. Into that one? You got me into that one. Yeah, Aki got me into that one. Really, really good. I got all seven volumes of that as well. Next, we got a bunch of like a uh, Gintama spin off manga. Um, I don't honestly remember where I got these from. I think they were kind of just in a second hand store for like really, really cheap. So I just got it. Weirdly enough, I don't have any of the actual Gintama manga. I probably will get them eventually because I never actually finished reading the Gintama manga and I freaking love it. But next to that, we have all 17 volumes of Karada Sagashi, a very, very good horror manga from Shonen Jump Plus. Uh, kind of reminds me of Corpse Party a little bit. It's like Corpse Party, but not as gross or edgy. It's still pretty gross though, so yeah, viewer discretion if you plan to get into that. Next we have all six volumes of Shinazu no Ryoken. This one is really interesting because one of my fans, I believe, at a convention, I don't remember which convention it was, I think it was Anime Expo, he uh, told me about this and told me that I should read it. I looked into it, freaking amazing, uh, really unknown manga but really really well written and uh, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, but next to that of course we have the first seven volumes of the Baka Monogatari series, which is the Monogatari series in general. And next to that is all eight volumes of Pluto. Now not a lot of people know this but fantastic Urasao Naoki manga which is like Urasao Naoki's version of the continuation of the Astro Boy series. So, if you like your monster 20th century boys or your Astro Boy, absolutely fantastic manga series. Um, I'm probably going to make a video about it uh, once I finish reading it, but the little that I have read so far, and I'm a huge fan of Urasa and Naoki and Tezuka Osama, so it's like a, just a manga match made in heaven. All right, so, absolutely fantastic manga. Next to that is Gordere Bishoujo Nagisora, Nagihara Sora. Really weird uh, kind of etchy comedy series that I don't know where the hell I found it, but I got all four volumes of that because why the hell not? And next to that we have ugh, Yokai Kyoshitsu, Ito Junji. 
melting classroom, I believe it's called. We're, we call it dissolving classroom. Dissolving classroom, yeah. Uh, really weird Ito Junji manga. Even in the Ito Junji world, this one is especially weird. <laughs> so, I thought it was just more strange than it, scary. It was a little bit strange, yeah. But, you know, it's only one volume, so if you want something that's short, sweet, and to the point, then I recommend that. We're at the final bit of the first shelf. Uh, we got a bunch of, like, kind of one-shot stuff, stuff that I've kind of just collected over time. We got some Inio Asano stuff right here. We got Shoujo Tsubaki, because I just found this really fucked up anime series from the 80s. Manga is equally fucked up. Uh, we got the first three volumes of Dorohedoro. I really need to get the rest of this because I freaking loved the first three volumes. Uh, next to that is Pop Team Epic, the original manga, which I was in, not the manga, the anime. Pop Team Epic. Next to that, uh, it's just a bunch of short stuff. Oh yeah, I've got an English copy of Fairy Tale because I got it in like a, a box. <gasps> I know. Dun, dun, dun. Shame on me. Next to that, I have like a collector's version of Tomie, which is, uh, I think it was the first Ito Jinji manga that he ever wrote. Really, really good. Next to that, I have Azumanga Daio as well. I need to collect the last two volumes of this. There's four volumes of this. I only have the first two. And next to that, you don't really need to worry. It's just a bunch of hentai. Oh, except for Opus. Have you read this yet? Not yet. Okay, I've been meaning for him to read this Shh. one. Do you, do you see how much manga there is? We're only on the first shelf. <laughs> Give me a break. God damn. All right, that's the first shelf. Let's move on to the second one. All right, with this shelf, we're gonna make like Drake and start from the bottom. We've got the all six volumes of Homura no Me, which is uh, a manga series done by Oshikiri Densuke, who is the creator of High School Girl, as well as a bunch of other manga. Um, freaking fantastic. Out of I love Oshikiri Densuke just as a manga artist, and like his art is just so dynamic, that's the only way I can put it, and very different feel from High School Girl, which is easily his most well-known manga, but if you love Oshikiri Densuke's like kind of more dramatic stuff, uh, much like Misumiso, which I did a video on, then uh, definitely go and read that. Next to that is the first six volumes of Kimishi ni Tamagu Koto Nakare, which is a kind of a strange, I don't know how to describe it, but it's written by Yoko Taro, who is the uh, creator of Near Automata, the Nier games. So he wrote that and he wrote this manga story as well. So I like Yoko Taro, I like Nier Automata, so I was like, hey, I'll buy your manga. It's pretty good so far. I haven't got all the current volumes yet, but you know, I'll get to that eventually. Next to that is Hazrete Minna no Atama no Neji. I've talked about this in a monthly otaku, really fucked up horror. Next to that is Uroski Doji. I also covered this in a very recent, or actually, no, I haven't talked about this yet because. That's going to be the next video that comes out after this, so I guess look out for that if you're interested. Next to that, uh, all of this I'm not going to really cover because it's all art books, doujins, uh, just magazines and stuff like that, all anime related. Mostly art books of different series. Probably the coolest one, if I had to show one of them off, the coolest one that I got uh, is... Experience. yeah. Serial Experiments Lane. Abe Yoshi, an Abe Yoshitoshi Serial Experiments Lane illustration book, which I actually received as a gift for, uh, when I was a guest at uh, Singapore uh, Anime Convention. Some dude just came up to me. I thought he was, he like boarded at the con and, uh, you know, he wanted me to like sign it. And he's like, no, you can just have it. And uh, if you love your Serial Experiments Lane like I do, then this is. Oh, yeah, it's got also as well like a bunch of like, I guess like exclusive manga of Lane. Very cool stuff. Yeah, I could talk about that all day, but I'm not going to. Obviously, uh, obviously, I'm not going to talk about any of these art books because I could be here all day about it. We're going to talk about the manga because that's what the title of the video is. So let's talk about the manga. Okay, this shelf I like to dub as the Kawashita Mizuki shelf because almost everything here is written by Kawashita Mizuki. So Kawashita Mizuki's most well-known manga, which is a huge guilty pleasure of mine, is Ichigo 100%. Uh, I did a whole video on that as well, so go check it out. Next to that is all four volumes of Hatsukoi Limited, which is the one that she did after uh, Ichigo 100%. And next to that is two volumes, first two volumes of Lilum Kiss, also very cute. And next to that is the first two volumes of G Edition. Yeah, really cute. I love Kawashita Mizuki. 
read their stuff. We got the first seven volumes of Desaraba. Again, I covered this in a monthly otaku, so you don't need to worry about that. And then next to that, I have the first five volumes of Hinotori, or Phoenix. This is one of my favorite Tezuka Osamu manga, and I really want to finish collecting the rest of them. I think there are 12 volumes altogether. So I, but the problem is because this manga, as you can see, extremely old. I think this was written in like the early 70s or something, but absolutely fantastic Tezuka Osamu manga. Really graphic as well. Like, you, you, it's hard to believe that this is written by the same guy who did Astro Boy. As you can tell, since these are very old, they're very hard to come by for a reasonable price. So I'm still trying to look for the remaining seven volumes of this. And uh, eventually when I do, hopefully I can make a video on it. And behind that is ugh, all 27 volumes of Hokuto no Ken, Fist of the North Star. One of my all-time favorite Shonen Jump manga. I mean, if you love your Jojo, I love my Jojo and a bunch of like testosterone-driven manga and this one is just so good. So good. Omaiwa mo Shinderu is what came from this. And of course, next to that, we have another Nishio Ishin uh, manga that is not that well known. Shonen Shoujo. I'm pretty sure I covered this as well in a monthly otaku, so I'm not going to talk about that. All right, moving up, we have the first 15 volumes of Hunter x Hunter. Now, I've never actually read Hunter x Hunter before, nor have I watched Hunter x Hunter before, which is really weird because Yu Yu Hakusho is like a manga from my childhood. But uh, the reason why I haven't started on Hunter x Hunter is because I kind of want to wait till it's finished. I know that's probably going to take like 50 years but eventually it's gonna have to end so right now i'm slowly collecting the manga so that i can kind of just like read it all at once i don't i basically don't want to like run into like a berserk situation where i'm waiting seven years for the next volume so right now i have at least the first 15 volumes of that and behind that is of course as i just said all 19 volumes of yu yu Hakusho. again too many people don't read yu yu Hakusho. there are so many people talking about hunter x hunter Motherfuckers are missing out on Yu Yu Hakusho. Read Yu Yu Hakusho, it's freaking amazing. And then next to that, we have Mayo Neko Overrun, the first two volumes of that. We got a few uh, short form Miyazaki Natsujike manga, uh, who is an artist that is very, very strange, but I talked about in a couple of monthly otaku collections. Freaking amazing underground manga artist that I hi very highly recommend. And right next to that, we have the first 21 volumes of one of my favorite currently serializing manga series, Yudagi Son no Yuna san. Now, I realize that, yes, this is very much a trashy, etchy rom com series, but I don't care. This shit is awesome. I freaking love it. I mean, I grew up with series like Tolavaru, and this is pretty much the modern day Tolavaru. Uh, I have the latest volume, volume 21, that just came out about a month ago. It just gets better and better as more time goes on. And behind all of this is a few more series. We have Konya Otsuki wa Kirei desu ga Toriyaizu Shine, the first 10 volumes of that. Really good uh, horror survival stuff. We have Fire Punch done by Fujimoto Tatsuki. Uh, I have all eight volumes of that. Freaking awesome. I have the first nine volumes of Happiness, which is an Oshimi Shuzo done by the same guy who did um, Akunohana, Flowers of Evil. Really, really good human drama. The reason why I only have the first nine volumes is because the final 10th volume is like, for some reason, stupidly expensive. Like even on Amazon, I think the last volume is like, 4,000 yen or something, which is like $40. I, I don't know why the last volume is so freaking expensive, but I'm trying to look for the final volume of this so I can actually read it. I can finish reading it because it's so freaking good. But while I lament about how the final volume of happiness costs all of my happiness, essentially, let's talk about the fact that I have the first 15 volumes of probably one of the trashiest manga of all time, Kiss Sis. <laughs> I don't know why. But I freaking love this manga. I don't, I don't understand why I love this manga so much. And I don't understand how it's still going. Like, this volume 15 isn't even the latest volume. And it's, it's somehow still going. Also, there's this, like, weird, really weird... I don't know if the camera can pick this up. There's, like, this really weird glossy... Yeah, yeah, you can see it. ...effect on it. It's, like, all these, like, hearts. I don't know. I, I think Kiss This is the only manga that kind of has this thing. This isn't even, like, a special version either. Like, every volume of Kiss This has this, like tinted 
heart glow, which I think is kind of cool. Usually they put that on like art books. Yeah, right? But mm. Kiss Sis, I guess, is just like so in its own league that even standard volumes have it, which is kind of strange. But behind that, we have some actual good manga, uh, including, oh, actually, I guess it kind of starts up here, but all behind this shelf right here is all stretches all the way down here, 37 volumes of Vagabond. One of, probably one of the best uh, samurai manga to ever be made, done by uh, Inoue Takehiko, the creator of Slam Dunk. So, I mean, that guy's just a freaking genius, honestly. And right next to that is, again, another masterpiece, Blam. I have all 10 volumes of that. Uh, again, much like Happiness, for some reason, the last volume of Blam, this volume 10, cost me a fuck ton. I don't understand why, but uh, I got my hands on it somehow. So I'm happy about that, at least. Next up, I have the first five volumes of Shumatsu no Warikyure. I'm probably gonna, again, do a video on this because the concept for this manga is so freaking cool. I mean, the, the, the title already looks cool, right? This cover looks freaking sick. Hell yeah. But uh, I have the first five volumes of that. Next, I have the first two volumes of Haite Kudasai Takamine-san. I have covered this in a monthly otaku, and also the creator of this follows me on Twitter, so... <laughs> and after that, another one series that I covered in a monthly otaku collection, Denjin Inu. I have the first three volumes of that. Again, all the stuff at the front is all currently serializing stuff, so as you can see, I have a lot of series that are currently serializing, so it's a little bit of a pain to like keep up with everything, but hey, it's worth it because I get to keep up to date with that fresh new manga. All right, moving down here, we got first five volumes, including a spin-off of Ishizoka Reviewers. Again, I think everybody knows that. Uh, again, a few more series that I covered in Monthly Otaku, like this one with one of the longest freaking titles in all existence. I have the first three volumes of Anenarumono, done by Ida Pochi, also a former hentai artist. And then we got a few more, like first volume of Arisu Tachi no Hyohon, Ichine Egumi no Monster, Nande Koko ni Sensei ga, and the first volume of Asobi Asobase. I watched the anime of this and I freaking loved it. And uh, also Reina suggested that uh, this was a really, really funny and good manga. So I bought the first volume of it. Haven't started reading it yet though, but I'll eventually get to it. Okay, behind that is all 21 volumes of Hakaiju. I also talked about this in a... I think I talked about this series in my video. 10 amazing manga series that shouldn't be an anime. That's one of them. Really good. Read the manga for it instead. Uh, we have Kikikujima, which is probably the most fucked up horror manga that I have. Next to a couple more that I'm going to talk about. But yeah, this one's pretty fucked. So read at your own discretion. Okay, we got a few more. Short stuff. That is still serializing. First three volumes of Yotsubato, Aono Furagu, Akutaju, Signal 100. A lot of these I covered in my monthly otaku, or I probably will eventually talk about in my monthly otaku collection, so don't worry too much about that. We got Nejimaki Kagyu, all 16 volumes? Yeah, 16 volumes of that. And we've also got Urataro, the first four volumes of that, done by the same guy. Really freaking amazing manga. This is again another series I talked about in my 10 manga series that shouldn't be an anime. Uh, I have all four volumes of Tokyo Akazuki, really fucked up Eragura series, but pretty entertaining nonetheless. And I have all three volumes of Jitorigaru, which is literally like E Thoughts, the manga. It's the only way I could explain that. We got all two volumes of Hyakumanjo Rabirinsu, which I talked about in my previous on the Otaku collection. And as you can see, right behind that is a lot of Hamabaki. Uh, I mean, this one is Son of Ogre, which is part three. But uh, even behind here and all behind here, as you can see a little bit of right there, there is part two Baki. And right behind here is part one Baki. Right now, I'm going through the long and arduous process of trying to read and collect all the Baki manga, which is a lot, considering that this series has been going on since the 80s, and there's like over 100 volumes of this shit, but I'm slowly getting through it, so I have up to part 3, which is Hamabaki Son of Ogre. Um, again, much like Fist of the North Star and Jojo, testosterone-filled fighting manga, I fucking love it. Up here, we got Shumatsu no Haremu. First 11 volumes of that. This is getting an anime adaptation. I'm pretty sure sometime this year. I don't know how the fuck they're going to do that, but I guess good luck again. So I've got the first 11 volumes of that. I've got the first four volumes of Shumatsu no Harem Fantasia, which is basically like an isekai version of Shumatsu no Harem. And next to that, I have the first nine volumes of Kamisama no En Musubi. Again, I talked about this in a monthly otaku. Moving over here, we have the first 14 volumes of Dead Tube, which I did a whole video on because it's so fucked up. 
but for some reason I can't stop reading it, so go read that if you want. I have the first volume of Horimiya. Um, this one was actually recommended by my good friend D from Rebel House. Um, he's like a trashy, like, rom-com type of guy, and he suggested I check this one out. So I bought the first volume because I trust D's taste of manga and anime. I haven't read it yet, though. I've also got the first volume of Real, which uh, I plan to collect more of. But this is essentially, again, done by Inoue Takehiko, the creator of Slam Dunk. And this is, instead of regular basketball that he covered in Slam Dunk, this is wheelchair basketball. And I think it's the only manga that covers that kind of subject matter. But uh, I've heard that it's absolutely fantastic. So I plan to collect more volumes of that and get started on that. And last, but certainly not least, we're at the final part of my manga collection right here. So we got Namai no Nai Kaibutsu, which I'm pretty sure again covered in a monthly otaku. We got this one right here, which I'm probably going to talk about in a video of its own because it's just so fucking weird. It's called Uwa Yojo Tsuyoi, which means, wow, uh, that young girl is strong. Yeah, it's the title is just as weird as it sounds. Uh, we got the first two volumes of Dengoku no Toshi, which again, talked about in a monthly otaku. And another one I talked about in a monthly otaku, but I can't stress enough, is freaking amazing, is Candy and Cigarettes. Uh, this is done by the same guy who did Coppelion. Really freaking good manga artist. Um, this is basically just like a story about an old dude and a, this young girl being like secret agents and going around like killing bad guys. Super badass, but I freaking love it. And last but certainly not least is... Probably my most recent purchase, but it was a purchase that was necessary to uh, really add some flavor to my manga collection, is all 27 volumes of Claymore, which is, much like Berserk, is an absolutely fantastic dark fantasy manga. It's freaking awesome. If you love Berserk and you love your dark fantasy, please read Claymore. It is freaking amazing. Oh no. Oh god, help. But yeah! That's about it for my manga collection. Everything you see is pretty much a uh, general collection of what I have. Yes, it is a lot. Yes, it is still growing. But you're probably thinking to yourself, Joey, my boy, how many volumes you got, bro? Like, what is the actual total headcount? And luckily for you guys, and luckily for myself, in order to keep up to date on what series I have of what volume I have and just to make sure I don't accidentally double up and buy manga that is unnecessary for the collection, I actually have a spreadsheet that I keep that keeps track of what series I have, what volumes I'm missing, if the series is already finished, if it's already continuing, and how many volumes there are. And I think the last time I checked, I have 1,230. 13 volumes just in this room, just inside these two manga shelves. And as you can see from all the gaps, uh, a lot more can fit in here. I'm guessing like if I completely fill up both of these shelves, like front and back, I reckon I can fit about 15, 1600 volumes, um, which is a lot. And now the other question you're probably asking yourself is, Joey, how much did this all cost, bro? Well, because I'm a YouTuber and I love to put things out of perspective, let's assume that one volume, just any volume of this, is bought at its full retail price, which roughly is about 500 yen or five dollars. Now, compared to you guys over in the US and in Europe, five dollars a volume is pretty freaking cheap. Like, how much do you usually pay for like a volume of manga in the US? Like $10, maybe $12? It can go up to like 20. It can go up to $20, right? So even though in Japan, $5 a manga full price is quite expensive considering that there are a lot of secondhand stores where you can buy a volume of manga for a hundred yen or a dollar. Let's just assume that I paid full price for every single one of these manga. And to be fair, I did pay full price for a lot of these because these are new, these are still serializing and can't be found in second-hand bookstores. Roughly 1,200 volumes times 500 yen, $5. How much is that? Do the math. If you guys can do some quick maths, then you will know that I roughly paid about 6,000 US dollars for this. But not all at once. Not all at once, obviously, over the course of the four years that I've been living in Japan. So, if you put it in perspective, 
yeah, it's not too bad, right? But yeah, there's probably a bunch of people saying like, wow, what a waste of freaking money when you can just buy manga online and pirate it online. Yeah, but what's the point in that? I want to support the industry by buying these beautiful manga series. And look how good it looks, dude. You can't get this with pirating manga. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much my manga collection for the time being. Again, it's still growing. If you'd like to know more details on any of the series I talked about, then... I'm sure you've seen the title of each of the manga on the screen as well while I was introducing it. But also, I've covered a lot of these series either in videos of their own or in monthly otaku collections. So I'll leave a link to some of the more prominent videos that I want you guys to go check out down in the description below. That's my penis. Stop. Also, I guess let me know down in the comments below if there is a manga series that you recommend me to go check out or if there's a manga series that I should cover in a video and talk about in future monthly otaku collections. Then yeah, let me know down in the comments below or you can do all of that as well by following your boy over on Twitter and tweeting at me because that's probably the best way that you're going to get noticed. Feel free as well on Twitter to send me your manga collections because I'm curious, like of people all over the world, like, what your manga collection looks like. Obviously, I don't think any of y'all is as good as mine, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to check it out for you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this very long, yet, I hope, interesting manga collection video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, like your favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of banter, keep watching anime. Ta-da!